All right, so we come to our final speaker of this morning, Francis Gendron from Quebec. Come out here, Francis. Francis's thing is sustainability, and I think you'll see how he fits in the pattern of talks that we have here Thank this morning. Thank you very much, Moses. Thank you so much. Actually, I'm really, really honored to be here today because, as you can see, um, I'm not Michael Reynolds. <laughs> I'm not the inventor of the earth chip myself because he wasn't available to be here today. Some people call him the garbage warrior also. He became famous with that movie that came out in 2005. But I am the first graduate from the Earthship Academy, which, um, which started in 2011. And so I'll do my best today to try to show you and demonstrate why I personally and truly believe that Earthship are a radically sustainable solution. And mostly like the philosophy and principle behind it are a radically sustainable solution for many of today's problem. So um, as you can see on this graphic, <clears throat> When Michael Reynolds came out of the arch architectural, that's a very hard word for me, architectural school <laughs> in, the, in the 70s, he was looking at the fundamental idea of a house that we can see on the right side there. He was looking at the fundamental idea and was just thinking, if we keep going that way, we know for sure that we're going to be in deep trouble very soon. Because, and we, the speech right before me was a perfect introduction to that. Because what in, a house is at the moment it's just this um, structure made, of, made out of concrete and other manufactured material that will soon become garbage, right? We build it and we know soon enough it's gonna become garbage. But the other problem is that, is that house, because of its design, needs to be constantly pulling on energy. So that house is constant, constantly pulling on electricity, it's pulling on gas, it's pulling on water, fresh water, that we have to add chlorine and fluoride and things like that to it. And what is it giving back? It's giving back black water, pollution, and garbage. So we have kind of a machine that takes our good stuff and give it, give it back as a problem or garbage or pollution and things like that. And so um, he thought, if we want to get out of this, if we want to have a new strategy that will be sustainable for the future, we need to reverse that circle. We re need to reverse that. And so what he thought was, we're going to take the garbage of the past. We have a ton of it, right? We have, a, <laughs> we have enough garbage to build a lot of houses for a long time. We're going to use that. We're going to rearrange it strategically so it interacts with the natural phenomena because the natural phenomena are infinite. So I'm talking about sun, wind, and rain, and all the other ones, but those are the three main ones. And that interaction will produce everything that we need, which are shelter, um, food and water, and power as well. So from that first idea became a bigger, wider mission for his company that's called Earthship Biotexture, and that was to procure for a, f a safe future, so a sustainable autonomy for everyone became the goal. So if we want this kind of technology to be accessible to everyone, there was a few other principles that were important to uh, add to this. And the first one was simplicity. So must be accessible to all, easy to build and, <coughs> sorry, and maintain. And the reason for that was we need a building that's resilient, first of all. But second of all, we also want to bring back, big, bring back this idea of people joining and working together to build something. And a very good example of that is two weeks ago, I wanted to build the first farm of the future, which is uh, taking all of the principles from Earthship and putting them into a greenhouse design. And I just used Facebook, said that I was going to teach people who wanted to learn how to build this building, and that uh, they can just come and help me out. And even though it was raining, 45 people showed up from 8 years old to 72 years old, girls and men. And uh, we just had a total blast working together. Uh, and it just reminded me of the power of this multi-generation of people working together and making the solution, actually doing it. Because I do love all this technology and all the stuff that's coming that we've heard a lot about so far, but it's also very empowering to see that you can do something right now. And so all these people at the end were like, the dads were like, that was even more fun than my last fishing trip. And the kids were like, that's more fun than video games and things like that. So there was, we could see the interest uh, growing up. The second one is independence. So the decentralization of basic needs is the only solution so that economic speculation does not affect the survival of the poorest people. 
So if the house or the building itself is producing food, water, and shelter for the people, then e even when there's an eco economic collapse, as we know can happen, the people at least have, still have what they need to survive. And so it's not because the economy collapsed that people are starving to death and things like that. Maybe they can't buy their app, iPad anymore or their motorcycle or something like that, but they can survive and be comfortable still. The third one is environmentally friendly, maximizing a positive impact which is a concept that most people have never even heard of because most people s still live in the idea or the paradigm of the first house we looked, up, <laughs> we looked before. And as long as we're going to be in that paradigm, we know that we're always going to be minimizing our negative impact. And the problem with that minimizing our, our negative impact is it feels like a lot of weight. And I, do not, and I know that personally because I work a lot with the new generation. People are 15 to 25 right now, and these people feel the weight because since they were very young, they constantly hear that we're trashing the place, we're trashing the place, and it's true, but they don't hear a lot about solutions. And so uh, they believe that humans are made to destroy things, which is not true at all, and you'll see that very shortly. Before I get into how it works, I'm just going to show you a little bit, and I'm going to try this. Oh, yeah, it works. Can you see it? Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> That's great. Anyways, um, if we want to interact with natural phenomena, it's very important to orient our house properly. And so this is south, this is north, and as you can see, this is the ground, so it was flat when we decided to build a building there. It doesn't need to be at a certain angle or anything like that. From the north side, we can see we've added dirt all the way to the roof. This is the roof, very well insulated right here. We have here the uh, cistern on the back. We have a cooling tube, which is just a big tube that lets air in through that tube, I'll explain everything, how it works and stuff like that very shortly. Here we have the room where people live. So it's just, that's where the living room is going to be, the bathroom, all this stuff. This is like the house itself. Here we have the greenhouse, which as you can see is connected to the house, but there is a wall in between. There's a wall, it's just glass um, that's separating the greenhouse from the place where you live. You also have one planter right here and one planter here that will be dealing with gray water and black water because I just want to, if I wasn't clear at the beginning, Earth ship is called Earth ship because it actually is a ship, can be built anywhere because it's completely off grid. So right at the beginning, we had that little movie talking about a house that's built just anywhere because it doesn't need a grid. That's an example of that. Um, it can be built just anywhere. It doesn't need a nuclear power plant or anything like this. It's doing everything on its own just through its interaction. Now, the sixth feature of the Earth chip, earlier in the previous days, people were talking about $1 billion idea. Here's, here's six, six of those. Each principle of the Earth chip in itself, I believe, is a complete revolution and can be used in big cities, small cities, normal building, uh, houses, things like that. But when you combine them together, it gives you the Earth chip, which is the design I'm talking about today. The first principle is modern alchemy. So back in the days, the cool thing to do for alchemists was to try to take lead and transform that into gold. But nowadays, we have something much more exciting to do, which is taking garbage and transforming that in something much more valuable than gold. And that's an autonomous house or an autonomous greenhouse that helps people produce everything they need to survive and or thrive. So this is an example. We can see three little person right here. And that explains why our main building material is tires, because we're producing one billion a year. So that means if a UFO was coming on the planet right now, he would probably think that it grows here, because we have more tires than we have trees at the moment. So these are usually accumulated in big piles like that, which are a big problem. If not, they're just thrown in the ocean most of the time. Some people, like in Quebec, were actually the leaders in the world in terms of recycling, but most other people are really um, not dealing with this waste properly. And so we can see that as a problem, or we can see it as a very good solution, because Michael Reynolds at first was using those tires because he wanted, wanted to recycle them, but now he's actually using them because he thinks it's the best building material there is ever. That's all. Why? Because it's super simple to use, it's free, it's infinite, you can find it everywhere in the world, he's been everywhere in the world, and you can find tires everywhere. You just put it on the ground, fill it up with the local dirt, right? And when pounded properly, it gives you a 300 pounds uh, thermal mass brick, I'm going to explain what thermal mass is very shortly, that is more stable when you make your wall with it, that is more stable than cement. 
because cement is made out of a mono monolithic block, so often earthquakes and things like that can make cracks into it that will um, destroy the structure itself. But uh, tires, because there are huge bricks like that, can just move with it and, uh, and not be affected in terms of the structure itself. They're also non-toxic because they spend so much time on the road already that all of the off-gassing that had to be done has been done already. Of course, there are used tires, but also they are completely um, encased. So the north side, as you've seen, is full of dirt, and you're going to see more image of that. And the inside is plastered either with cement or with natural material, because that's the idea of an airship. We're building the structure with uh, garbage, but then we're covering everything with natural material, so people who live in it are actually in this very rich, beautiful environment made of natural material, so it's healthy for them as well. We can see a wall right here. This is a tire wall. Nobody can ever know that it was built with that. Now, the other material, there's many other material. They're using all sorts of garbage, but the other classic, I'd say, is the glass bottle. The only dark side to that is a lot of earth builders builder drink a lot of beer because they need their building material for the next day. <laughs> so that sometimes can be... The next thing is passive heating and cooling. So that's, that's really amazing what they've figured it out, how they figured that out. They, in New Mexico, it's in New Mexico, but they're at 7,500 feet, which means that it goes to minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius there as well. But they figured out how their newest model, the global model, doesn't need any heating or cooling. And we've seen in the previous presentation that it's a lot of the cost. So any heating and cooling to keep a stable temperature inside at 19 to 21 degrees Celsius year round. So this is very impressive. They're using three principles to do that. The first one is thermal mass. And thermal mass is instead of just using insulation to protect yourself from the outside cold, which is a very great idea, and we do that in most buildings. We also have a lot of thermal mass, which Enerchip has so much more thermal mass than any other type of building. It's actually ridiculous, the amount of thermal mass that's there. Um, and what it is, thermal mass, is just any material that's um, uh, dense, just like earth, or compact earth, or even concrete would act like this. If it's too hot inside the room, let's say during the day, the heat goes into the thermal mass, just like a battery and will release it as soon as the room cools down. And so it helps to have a buffer, especially in solar homes. And you'll see this house is a solar home because the south side is just glass and the north, east, and west are closed and, and buried underground, as we can see here. It's not buried, but we simulate that we're on the ground. And what happens is the winter sun goes right here and hits all the way to the back of the wall because we know that the winter sun is very low in, on the horizon, and so this, those angles are made so the sun goes all the way to the back, warming up that thermal mass when it's sunny, and that thermal mass is keeping the heat so that even when it's not sunny, it's staying warm. Um, the other thing is, when the summer sun is very steep, because it's, it's already too hot, we don't want it to be hotter than that, this is only hitting within the greenhouse, which is separated by a glass right here that we can see. So what happens is, the, the greenhouse is the only section that, be, that becomes really, really hot. So the greenhouse is too hot to live in during the summer, but you can go in there and stuff like that, but you don't want to live there. And so the greenhouse, the air rises up there through a skylight that we just open, and that air rising needs to pull new air in. So that's where we open the um, cooling tube right here, and that will draw some air underground that's going to be cooled down to uh, cool the, the space where we live, which is this area right there. What's amazing is we're passively cooling our home just with physics, basic physics, so it can't break. That's the amazing thing. You know, I love technology, but when it breaks, it breaks. This one can't break. It's just passively working. The other amazing thing is when we simulate that we're buried, so if, let's say, our north side, we bring the dirt all the way to the roof, we get access to the stability of the inside of the earth. So here in Canada, let's say, if you're 10 to 15 feet of, of underground, the temperature is stable at 10 degrees Celsius. So in the winter, let's say it's minus 40 outside, or in the summer it's plus 40 outside, well, this earth chip is not as, as affected as a normal building by this because it's mostly affected by the underground temperature, which is 10 degrees. And so we just have to take that 10 degree and bring it up to the uh, 21, let's say, or the 20 degrees Celsius that you want inside your house. 
So those three principles together make it work. Now we're going to talk about water harvesting, which is really, really amazing. And I see that I don't have a lot of time, but the goal with water harvesting is to get your water only from the rain, so you're not pulling on water. A lot of people say the third world, third, third world war will be about water because everybody wants to pull on water, right? We want it from lake, we want it from rivers, and let's say in the States, they don't have any more water, so they want to pull it from the Great Lakes now. And it's going to keep going like this for as long as we don't change our ways. What they're doing is they're getting the water from the rain. It's going into cisterns that we can see at the back right here, and which are underground, so it's like your personal aquifer. This goes inside the house and will be filtered. And I'm, I just want to remind you that they live in the desert, so we get eight times more water than they do. Um, and they'll do everything. They'll drink that water. They do everything with that water because it's, drink, uh, it's drinkable water with the filters that they have. And rainwater is actually pretty clean, clean right off the bat. And uh, what's really amazing is if you want to be able to do this, you need to recycle. You need to reuse that water multiple times because then you will be in big trouble because you won't, you won't have enough. But what they do is, let's say I take a shower in an earth chip. I feel really good because I love hot showers, but I don't feel good about taking a shower in a normal house because it's very energy efficient. So what happened is I take a shower, it's rainwater warmed up by the sun. As I'm taking my shower, that water is going through gravity to my plants in the greenhouse that we saw earlier. That water is going to be used another time to flush my toilets or a third time. And that water is going to go outside to a normal septic tank, but I'm going to reuse the black water again to um, to use for to water my plants outside. So because I use it four times, now just rainwater is plenty enough to live a very comfortable life. And as you can see, that's what I'm talking about, maximizing a positive impact. They live in the desert, but they took all the garbage around, built a house, and now that they live here, things are starting to grow outside, right? Because they're reusing their black water outside, so now there's gardens and trees and things like that right in the desert just because they live there. Here's some pictures that I would like you to see, um, just to show that it can actually look very good. Um, also, to demonstrate that it can look very strange, because Michael Reynolds does love it when it looks strange, but it can also look very good and more like usual, I would say. Now, special project, there's a few, I only, I only have a few minutes more. Um, the special project, the Phoenix, wanted to demonstrate two things. Luxurious living is possible with those principles, and it's possible also to produce all the food that you want, uh, that you need to survive, enough to survive for a family of four right in your house. So this is the house itself. This is the living room with a big flat screen TV right there, <laughs> nice and comfortable. But when you're in the living room listening to TV, you can just stretch and get a banana in one of your eight <laughs> banana tree right there. So it's not bad at all, actually. This is the greenhouse in which you can grow all the food that you need to survive for a family of four. They also have a little chicken Hilton right in front of it because it's a little earth chip for chicken. They have a blast. They just exchange their compost for more eggs. And uh, yeah, both have a good time. From the, this luxurious living goes all the way to a very serious solution for poverty because when there's a disaster, earth chip biotexture goes there. They show the local how they could use the garbage that they have all over and transform that in houses that will take care of them with a fraction of the price, of course, because they're using almost exclusively garbage when they go in third world countries. This is IT after the earthquake. Africa, they have a big project right now. This is what they built with them in t two days, uh, sorry, in 10 days, and the local finished it on their own. So that's what's really empowering about this, because instead of just bringing stuff to them, we're just bringing knowledge. They do it themselves afterwards. And it's a real solution. Communities, the only difference between an earth chip community and a normal one, instead of facing the road, you're facing south, which totally makes sense, right? You want to be facing south anyway. That's where the sun comes from. Communities in bigger, you can have earth chips in the back, and you have a big greenhouse in front to produce food, or put a bicycle lane if you want to, <laughs> if it's really big. The project I've been working on in Quebec is the uh, the greenhouse project, so taking all of these principles to make the farm of the future, as I talked about earlier. And I would like to conclude on this. Oh, well, actually, this is just a few pictures to show that it's been built everywhere, because it has been built everywhere already. 
Um, I would like to conclude on this because when I was at the Airship Academy, I didn't completely realize how powerful this knowledge was, but now that I'm using it back home and empowering communities and people, even if we're not in a third world country, I see the interest for these greenhouses and these houses that can make a very big difference, and people can do something about it. So now I believe that Airships are one of the most inspiring and important innovation of our era, a source of hope for future generations. Using art, science, and philosophy to turn the waste from the past into a self-sufficient, sustainable home that meets all of the basic needs of its inhabitant without consuming energy. That is, to me, the true meaning of the word technology. Thank you very much.